So the resilience action dialogue is a, this is a second resilience action dialogue that is taking place this year. The first one took place last year. And the resilience action dialogue brings together some key people in Southern Africa that are working on different issues around resilience, whether it's universities that are thinking around the theories that inform resilience, uh, organizations like SADAC and NEPAD that are kind of setting the global African agenda around the, the issues around resilience and how to push that forward in a recognizing that we operate in complex systems that requires uh, much more, um, if you like, integrated approach to managing some of the challenges that we face uh, as a continent. And then you have institutions like uh, the World Food Program, the FAO, uh, FAOs and so on, who are also playing a significant role in the region around um, around uh, disaster response in, in terms of the shocks that are experienced in, 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 uh, in, in the region. Uh, the key thing is that um, all these different stakeholders are approaching the issue of resilience from different perspectives. Um, others are taking more from a disaster response perspective, looking at more from a vulnerability perspective. But there's increasing thinking that resilience really needs to be applied in a much more strategic uh, sense in terms of looking at it as a systems, taking a systems, systems approach because we are in a complex world. Um, so it cannot be, we cannot promote a reductionist thinking in terms of implementing the resilience as an approach and, and things like that. So really this dialogue tries to uh, bring, to build this community of practice of resilience practitioners, uh, actors, uh, policy makers and so on, to build a critical mass of um, uh, people who are basically doing this innovative work on the ground so that uh, the concepts that are being developed at the university level f from a theory actually find resonance on the ground with the practitioners and policymakers who ultimately uh, inform decision making by the different governments in the, in the, in the region. So really, in a nutshell, the, the space that we're trying to hold here in this dialogue is to create that, if you like, safe space where this emerging emerging concepts and ideas can be interrogated uh, in much more deeper perspective and to see what are the kind of emerging lessons that are emerging out of the practices that are being undertaken by various organizations. Um, and the dialogue is designed exactly as that in the sense that uh, we have a mix of theory in terms of the thinking that has gone through research, thought leaders from that space, more from an university perspective, and then deep dives into specific case studies of resilience being applied in different contexts, and then interrogating those case studies to see what are the kind of lessons that emerge out of there, the principles that inform uh, re resilience, whether it's systemic, uh, transformative, and making sure that we're operating at different scales and so on, but try to say, how can those principles of resilience be informed? Uh, basically, how can those principles of resilience be effectively applied on the ground? And I think that for the practitioners who are at this dialogue, for them it's also a very important platform in the sense that um, they get to check against other, stake other, other, other stakeholders working on the same topic, whether they're on the right course and so on, and gives them an opportunity to um, if you like, to uh, draw any lessons from this room to go back what they're doing on the ground to, you know, reimagine uh, the work they're doing in a different context.